Professor Lowe states, according to his calculations, the object known as 3I Atlas lost an incredibly large amount of mass, so much so that it could indicate its catastrophic disintegration into numerous fragments. New calculations conducted at Harvard yield the same alarming conclusion. During its flyby near the sun, 3I Atlas experienced a disruption, which could have resulted in millions of separate pieces. We are no longer observing a single body, but a system of debris that the sun will stretch and scatter with its tidal forces. The physics here is clear, the mathematics is rigorous, and the consequences are truly extraordinary. Nevertheless, this natural version, albeit dramatic, remains the simplest hypothesis. But there is an alternative explanation that Lowe considers just as seriously. The window for testing these scenarios is rapidly closing. Here is an unexpected physical question that few predicted. Based on energy estimates required for the mass evaporation rate demonstrated by 3I Atlas, its core would have to have a diameter of at least 14.3 kilometers. For the evaporation of carbon dioxide and water to produce the observed mass loss rates, a total absorbing surface area equivalent to an object about 20 kilometers in diameter is needed, significantly larger than previously assumed. But Hubble images in July 2025, three weeks after its discovery, limited the core's diameter to a maximum of about one to two kilometers. This is a discrepancy by a factor of about 16. Hiding a 14 kilometer chunk of ice and rock from Hubble's capabilities is practically impossible. Another detail contradicting standard comet behavior, the object, was becoming increasingly blue, thermal. Heating of a normal comet typically results in a yellow-white glow. Dust scatters light at longer wavelengths. But 3I Atlas was shifting towards the short wavelength part of the spectrum, which is more akin to the reflection from metal containing materials than the behavior of a typical icy core. In the morning, information arrived, the object had brightened, and its color turned out to be even bluer compared to the sun, extremely atypical, because the presence of dust should, on the contrary, lead to a reddish tint. Imagine a snowball that, approaching a fire, instead of melting and reddening, starts to shine like metal. This is not something we have seen in natural processes. The standard explanation, sublimation of volatiles under solar heating and the formation of jets, seems logical. From early August to perihelion, October 29th, sublimation rates increased from warp force 330 keys to approximately 2 centenaut per 6 keygas, a growth of 6,000 dollar times. Daily mass losses went from fractions of a million tons to dollar 2 million tons per second at peak. But when the question of energy balance arises, the traditional model fails. Solar radiation near perihelion delivered about 700 JM2S, and Lowe calculated that to achieve such evaporation rates, a surface area of approximately 1,600 kilometer was needed, equivalent to a sphere with a diameter of about 14.3 kilometers, or roughly 20 kilometers in diameter for the required surface area. The only way to reconcile the thermodynamics is to assume the body broke apart into millions of small fragments, whose total surface area provides the necessary magnitude of thermal exposure. But on November 9th, 2025, observations by British astronomers Michael Butner and Frank Nebling turn the discussion on its head. Instead of a diffuse cloud of debris characteristic of thermal destruction, their photographs showed clearly defined column-like jets. An anti-tail, which are 950,000 tolauders kilometer long, appeared pointing towards the sun, behavior difficult to explain by the normal dynamics of the solar wind, which typically pushes material outward. The mainstream extended in the opposite direction for an error 285, a million kilometers, almost twice the distance from Earth to the sun. The images revealed at least seven separate jets forming geometrically. Precise directions, not chaotic spraying, but an ordered structure. For many, this will go unnoticed, but the geometry of these jets has important meaning. If the particles were formed by simple thermal disintegration, their distribution should be chaotic. Here, however, coordination is visible, as if the material is being directed, not simply released. Low calculated. To maintain a mass outflow of 250 billion tons per month, either a wholly preserved massive core is needed, which contradicts the fragmentation hypothesis, or millions of fragments, each possessing a surprising ability to actively eject mass. Natural physics struggles with both scenarios. Simultaneously, this raises the question of the causes and mechanisms behind such a prolonged and organized outflow if the familiar sublimation model doesn't readily explain the organized jets, sustained mass ejection, and geometric patterns. Another hypothesis is thrown onto the table, a technological artificial mechanism. Advanced propulsion systems provide exhaust velocities many times greater than the sublimation of ices, meaning achieving the same accelerations requires much less propellant mass. Directed thrusters could create neat columns and symmetrical jets, precisely the structures observed in the November images. Lowe does not claim this is proof of artificial origin. He carefully formulates two competing hypotheses and insists that only new observations can determine which one is closer to the truth. 
Lowe emphasizes Hubble spectroscopy in November and James. Web images in December will either confirm natural disintegration and break up into a cloud of small fragments or reveal anomalies in the structure that will force a reconsideration of the object's origin. He makes no claims about proving artificiality, only asks to trust the measurements and let them decide. Another troubling detail, 3i. Atlas's trajectory showed acceleration, exceeding what can be explained by solar gravity alone. At its closest approach to the sun, the object demonstrated an acceleration increase on the order of 94 kilometer kilometer day two. The units are unusual, but the effect is clear and a speed exceeding 150,000 miles per hour, and it continued to accelerate. In celestial mechanics, forces do not appear out of nowhere, so this fact also requires an explanation. The object was first detected on July 1st, 2025, by the Chilean Atlas program, and became the third confirmed interstellar visitor after Oumuamua in 2017 and 2 Brisov in 2019. By the end of August, James Webb's infrared instruments detected a carbon dioxide envelope. 348,000 kilometers in size, almost reaching the lunar orbit. But the spectra showed discrepancies. The iron to nickel ratio differed from typical cometary profiles. The molecular fingerprint looked correct in individual strokes, but not in the overall pattern, like a passport with counterfeit stamps that individually resemble real ones but are arranged incorrectly. Let's draw a comparison with predecessors. Oumuamua showed no signs of sublimation. It was a gasless, rotating object. 2i, Borisov behaved like a normal comet. Predictable evaporation, gradual fragmentation, everything fit known models. 3i Atlas occupies a strange intermediate position. In composition and behavior, a comet, but in accelerations, mass losses, and ordered jets, something we haven't seen among natural comets. Isus Atlas will make its closest approach to Earth around December 19th, 2025. Throughout November and December, Hubble and Webb are conducting intensive spectroscopic observations. This is our only chance to obtain high resolution data. Once the object moves beyond the effective detection zone in early 2026, the opportunity to study it in detail will vanish. It will depart into deep space beyond Jupiter's orbit and further gliding into the galactic gloom. Everything we gather in the next six weeks will become the permanent record of it. There will be no second chances. The spectra, images, and trajectories we record now will determine whether we can unambiguously distinguish massive natural outgassing from something fundamentally new. We are talking about a body, possibly born in an alien star system and drifting for billions of years, which fate brought to our planet's vicinity precisely when humanity has the tools to study it. The very fact of such an encounter, if it is not a coincidence on a universal scale, is astounding in itself. Either this is a unique natural phenomenon that will force us to expand our theories, or we are encountering a class of interstellar objects we never suspected before. In any case, the conclusions will be of immense significance. The disintegration is observed and measured. The jets have been recorded by several independent observatories. The acceleration cannot be reduced to gravity alone. Trajectory deviations have been precisely calculated. The question is, what physical processes created all this? Millions of ordinary fragments obeying orbital mechanics or something else, perhaps involving mechanisms that produce directed ejecta. The telescopes are already pointed. Data streams are arriving. Within the spectra, trajectories, and thermal models, the answer may lie, is this the natural outgassing of ice and rock? Or did an object just pass by that calls into question our understanding of the contents of interstellar space? Watch for the observation results in the coming weeks. Missing this window means forever losing the chance to definitively answer one of the most intriguing questions in modern astronomy.